Hi Kawan, welcome to EDC Ready. Today, I want to talk to you about the tale of two grills. What is a grill? A grill is basically something, it can be anything from watches, it can be knives, it can be laptops, it can be cars, something that is typically beyond your current reach, something that you dream about, something that you desire, something that you really wish you had in your collection or in your possession. And these things evolve over time. Some people only have one grill in their entire life. For example, in the EDC knife world, it could be that their grill is the uh, Sebenza or maybe a paramilitary 2 or maybe a ZT or maybe a Protect Malibu. Something that is either beyond their reach by way of scarcity or it could be beyond their reach by way of maybe financial, uh, fi within their current financial reason that they have. But these things change over time and these are the two grills in my collection in fact this guy the zt 450 cf is the oldest knife i currently have in my collection every other knife in this era of my collection has been sold but this guy sticks around and i want to talk about how my preferences has changed over time and uh, the ideas and the concepts and the mindsets behind this my first generational grill to this my current and second generational grill so we start historically, in chronological order, we have the ZT-0450CF. So this guy, uh, this was at the time when I was actually watching more Nick Shabazz videos. Right now, I don't really watch his videos so, so much just because uh, there's so many other great channels out there as well. And my intention is split as well. I watch a lot of Advanced Night Bros, Everyday Commentary, Everyday City Carry, so many other amazing channels out there. Blade HQ production has also gone up quite a lot. I watch Zach in the Wild, which used to work in Blade HQ. Now he is off in his own channel. So a lot of great channels out there. So this guy was my grill for a couple of reasons. Number one is that it had very nice, very exotic materials. What do you have here? Well, let's go through the outside. We have uh, titanium scales on one end, coated titanium scales, which is a very strong, very lightweight material. And then you have carbon fiber, which is... To me, which is amazing because I grew up watching a lot of Formula 1, so I was very much aware about carbon fiber. I knew of its uh, strength, I knew of its lightness, but what I didn't know about carbon fiber is how beautiful it can be. I've had other carbon fiber-esque knives from really budget brands, and those carbon fibers, it is carbon fiber, but it just feels like a sticker. But this carbon fiber, this has texture, this is ribbed for your pleasure. You can feel the different angles of the fibers that you have here. Some go that way, some go that way, and you can feel that texture. It almost feels like scales, like uh, snake scales, which are or fish scales, which are very, very nice. Next up, it has, at the time, the best blade steel. This is the M390 of its day. This is called S35VN steel. S35VN steel was an upgrade or the next step up from S30V. And S30V is a great steel. Even till today, S30V is still one of my favorite steels. It is very corrosion resistant. It has a very high amount of hardness. It does, uh, in a lot of knives, tends to be a little bit chippy, but that's because it tries to be as hard as possible. Uh, S35BN tries to balance out all those uh, 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 properties. It is uh, a little bit tougher, it is uh, almost as hard, and it is almost as corrosion resistant. So it's really trying to balance out that. In fact, in modern days, S35VN is probably one of the more balanced steels out there. Now you have many, many, many other steels like M390, 20CV. Like recently, we have like a big interest in MagnaCut, which is a... Uh, which is a great steel by itself. I personally really like LC200N. I think that's another really great steel. This is it, a knife in LC200N, typically used in the salt series knives. So I'll be talking about those steels a little bit later in another video. But yeah, so it had this nice blade shape. This is a 3.25 inch blade, which still today, three inches to 3.25 is kind of a sweet spot for me for everyday carry. And overall, this is just such a great knife design. But uh, the thing that stood out for me the most is actually the action. Uh, the action here is great. This has, till today, the best detent I've ever felt on a knife. Now, I've had quite a few knives uh, in my collection. I've had a lot of flippers. I've had a lot of thumb studs in my collection. Not as much as someone like Nick Chavez uh, or Talon Sai, but more more so than the average collector in 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 uh from from where I'm from. And this guy still has an amazing detent. It is the detent that really pops up and fires up. The pivot is not the smoothest, it's not going to be drop shutty, but it's smooth enough and the detent itself is, it just pops up 
very very nice and that's why i actually keep this guy around i keep this guy around because of the amazing carbon fiber and for this d10 uh that i really really love and on top of that it has possibly the best flipper design i've seen in any flipper knife i have another one here which i'll show you later this is nicely jimped okay it is chamfered on the edges here and uh, i believe this is uh well spaced as well so you don't really have like the the sharp the sharp kind of ridges that you have here on the spider Pair 3 you have jimping here but it's nice and smooth very nice on the hand the perfect angle to press down as well so that is why this guy sticks around because of all those amazing qualities but as i've experienced different knives in my collection certain things start you know become problematic you know this happened with nick shabazz and his grain razor and he started noticing some things that are that was not a problem before but eventually as other knives come out as things improve as design improves in the market these things started kicking in and started uh, looking like a problem for example this knife has a lot of uh, red flags that i would not buy in a new knife today for example uh, this has a free spinning pivot, which means if I want to uh, take this guy apart, I need to put, a, I, I need to put an, uh, a Torx bit on this side and a Torx bit on this side and then unscrew it while holding the other side. Whereas uh, every other knife in my collection is a non-free spinning pivot. Non-free spinning pivot, non-free spinning, non-free spinning. So that has evolved. Another thing is that this metal screw right here screws straight into the titanium. And this could be problematic because steel is harder than titanium, which means that you can if you're not careful, you put too much torque. The steel can actually, uh, can actually like wear into the titanium bits itself here. Actually, I don't really take apart this guy so much. So, and even when I put it back together, I'm actually really careful to make sure I don't over torque with the screw. Another thing is that I'm a big fan of deep carry pocket clips. Here's the deep carry pocket clip. When you put it into your pants, the pants can go all the way to the top. It keeps the profile nice and low when it's in your pocket. This guy as well, the Protec does possibly the best deep carry pocket clips because not only is the bottom of the clip sunk in, but the screws are also flush. And then you have those, uh, you have something that's completely deep carry, easy to get to the screws. And you have this little duck bill that points out a little bit. And that's actually very nice because it actually reduces, uh, what's the word? It actually reduces uh, hot spots in the hand. Whereas if I have another knife, do I have another knife an example? This guy has a bit of a ski jump at the top, but it doesn't flatten out. So as you grip it, that little ski jump right there can actually poke it to your hand a little bit. This is not such a bad example, but I've had some pretty bad examples out there uh, in, in my past collection videos. So that's it. So in conclusion, this guy still sticks around because I really like the action. I really like the flipper design. And I really like the, uh, I really like the scales here. But a couple of red flags that I can no longer accept in modern knives, okay? Like, free spinning pivot screws, non-deep carry pocket clip, screws that go straight into the titanium. This is pretty much around as a legacy knife, and I don't think I'll ever buy a knife like this again. This knife is like the uh, Monaco Grand Prix of my collection. The Monaco Grand Prix in Formula 1, if any of you are Formula 1 fans, that Grand Prix is a kind of Grand Prix that would never pass today. It's the kind of Grand Prix that would never get... Uh, accepted in the Formula 1 calendar today because it's a street circuit, you're close, you're literally at some parts of the track over the water, you're like inches away from the actual streets of Monaco and it's a safety hazard, the cars are way too big for the circuit now because the circuit was so narrow but just because it's Monaco, it stays around and I guess in that way, since Monaco is the jewel of Formula 1, this can be considered the jewel of my collection. Now moving on, what has my grill evolved into? You have here the Protec Malibu. So the Protec Malibu, this guy when it came out, produced such such a big buzz in the EDC market <clears throat> because this knife, in my opinion, perfected this kind of locking mechanism, the button lock, the manual button lock, where when you press this button, it moves this little post inwards and then that allows the knife to uh, basically free swing and then close it and then it kind of like moves back into position. So the detent is both on the on that pivot itself and the locking mechanism is both on that pivot on, on that little uh, post there. <clears throat> and this is the knife that really started the button lock craze that we are in right now, which I love. There are a lot of amazing, amazing button locks from Civivi, from CGRB, from uh, oh well, there's, there's a lot more. All the, a lot of, lot of protects now have uh, have button locks. 
In fact, Protex have always had button locks. Here is a CGRB button lock. A lot of budget button locks out there. And it all started with this guy and how well this guy did. So, what changed from here to here? Well, it's a lot of small, very tiny design aspects. It was at the point that it was not really about materials anymore. We have here a 20 CV blade, which is like the modern uh, ubiquitous uh, high-end steel right now, 20 CV M390. Uh, now Magna Cut is starting to come in, so we could see 20 CV and uh, M390 slowly come off the radar, but now it's still considered really high-end premium steel. Okay, And it has this amazing blade shape. Now when I bought this, I was not really thinking about the, the blade shape. This has a nice flat portion, nice small bit of belly, nice strong tip. This is what's considered a drop point with a wedge on the top. This guy has a much more appealing blade shape to me now. It has a worn cliff, but it's not a true worn cliff uh, because the true worn cliff is completely flat edge. This has a very smooth curve that goes all the way to the top. And this is great for doing these kind of pull cuts. Great blade shape. It has a, a similar blade size, just about 0 0.5. 0 0.5 inches longer than this pretty much the same 20 cv blade shape uh sorry 20 cv blade steel the the blade itself is stone washed okay whereas this guy is uh dlc coated and thing about stone washing is that it has one particular advantage here is a satin wash blade and the edges here can be a little bit sharp because you have here see that so that's the sanding belt Okay, that goes uh, through the blade to kind of shape it. This guy goes into a tumbler and then, and then it kind of tumbles with stone, hence stone wash, and then really trims down the edges here. So this these edges here have like micro, sorry, hit the camera. So these edges here have micro rounding on the edges here, and it really knocks off uh, the kind of any hardness in the edges at the top here. Of course, the bottom is super sharp. It is sharpened. The flipper tab also has very similar features. It has pretty much the same shape, which I think is the best shape for a flipper. It has jimping as well, although not as widespread and a little bit narrower. Uh, but because of the stone washing, you can see there, that's a prime example of why I like stone washing. It really knocks the edges of the jimping. So it actually makes this corners here nice and rounded and comfortable to use. The handle shape, also something I didn't really think about. And as I've used many, many other knives, I realized that how important handles are uh the kind of handle shapes i really like when it comes to the ergonomics i really like a slight curve to the to the handle i don't like these straight handles a very slight curve and no kick at the end the problem with this knife is that you have this little point at the end and as a result my hands small size hands doesn't really fit here like it's either this pinky is on this little edge here or if i try to spread it out it, it just feels a little bit too wide for comfort Whereas this guy has nice finger grooves here and here and then nice finger grooves uh, all the way to the end so my hands can come in, fit in, slot in without hitting any uh, hard edges on the, uh, on, on the handle scales. It is also nicely rounded, you can see here, some nice rounding both on the outside and the inside. These kind of things were like um, completely forgotten in some knives like Spyderco's FRN inside here, quite sharp here. Nice and rounded. And another aspect that has changed is the deep carry pocket clip. Uh, the pocket clip design it has completely changed in preference. I was okay with this kind of pocket clip. Now I don't really accept anything that is not deep carry. Or if I do, it's very much an exception and not the rule. So that's it. Handle scales are aluminium. So they are uh, pretty much rust proof as well. And it's coated, but it is like, it's not titanium or carbon fiber. So you don't really get any texture. So it's kind of slippery. So this is my current grail and I've gotten it and it was not easy to get this. I had to contact Protect directly. Protect sent me to uh, a store that doesn't have an online presence. Uh, they only have like a, they only sell, um, they only sell Protect Malibus at events. So I got in touch with them, managed to get it here. Quite an ordeal, quite, quite a process to get here. Even then, after some time, if you watch my review of any of these guys, uh, I will talk about things that I don't like about these guys. Uh, for example, the screws are kind of weird. You have like a T6 here and a T6 here, T6 here. And then here you have uh, an Allen key that is like the size of a T6. It's it's really weird. And I think you have T8s on the, uh, on the clip screws right here. I'll never take off the clip screws because it's kind of pointless. It's non-reversible. 
but it's kind of just that and there's there's no texturing it does have this kind of velvety smooth feeling uh, if it had like some 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 textures which i know some limited editions some special editions of this guy has those textures uh, those are really interesting and i'm very sure uh, if i uh, if i want to get deeper into this i can you can always look for your next grill and to be honest i kind of have been looking for a next grill not really i kind of have a uh, my eyes have been looking around a little bit here and there and the Grimsmo Rask is really, really appealing to me. The other one is the Holt Spectre. Both of these, for some reason, seem really, really appealing to me. I can't justify it because it's a big jump. This guy, when I bought it, was $180. Now, this guy is about $220. This guy, when it came out, was about $195. I bought it for about $210. And now, I think they're about $210 or $220. So, they're really around that $200 price point. But when you go to the like. Hold Spectre and Grismo Ras, you are looking at a grand, a thousand dollars and above. And that is, that would be a massive, massive jump. So I don't really see that. The only other kind of potential, maybe grail that I had in my mind was uh, a knife from a guy named Snacks. Snacks Tan is a Malaysian like myself and he produces all these amazing knives. But he does a lot of cast, uh, customs and he has a few very high end um, pieces with a uh, Wii but he recently did one with Civivi and I have the full review of this guy up so if you want to know why I love this knife so much why I think this is the perfect knife for me go check out that review thanks guys and as always stay ready